Hey everybody, how's it going? Today's video was brought on kind of as a response to last week's video, the 562 teardown. I got so many emails and comments on that video of folks that are either for or against auto-tune saws. And uh, I understand if you've had a rough time with your 562, you might not agree with the Tin Man. But today's video, I want to have an open and honest session with you guys. I want to talk about auto-tune saws and the do's and don'ts of them because I see things all the time. People send me videos of them running their saws and I see things that uh, I go, Ugh, as a saw mechanic, and I want to help you guys be better saw men and women. A lot of people have helped me and let's get into it. Auto-tune saws, are they garbage or should you buy one? <laughs> Okay, today's video, again, this isn't a shot at anybody. I just feel like I've been blessed to be in the spot I'm in, in on YouTube, and I've gotten to meet so many amazing people in this industry, you know, Bucking, Donnie Walker, Iron Horse, the boys from Ripsaw. I mean, I could go on and on. People from all different walks of life, people that cut for a living, people that build saws for a living. And I've been really blessed that I've gotten a lot of information gifted to me and, and I've spent the time and, and, and really learned how to run a power saw and build a power saw. doesn't mean I know everything, but I'm getting better and better. And uh, I'm going to share some of this with you guys. This is just an appetizer sampler of auto tunes that I have in my shop. 550. Another 550, my 562 carcass, my shiny new 572, and a 576 XPG that I've had for years. Um, good saw. I want to talk about each of these saws as they came to me, and the blown up ones anyways. Let's talk about auto-tune saws, and I'm going to compare them to ported saws because these modern saws they make power but they also make heat just like a ported saw and if you're new to this or you're not you know you're not somebody that cuts all the time or you're not particularly good at filing this is this is a video for you or maybe you have a problem 562 and you can't figure out what's wrong with it it's been in and out of the dealer and you're just you're you're at your wits end Maybe you got a bad saw, or maybe there's something you can do. Well, this video may help you decide that. I'm going to go through each one of these saws, and uh, this one I bought new. There's nothing to say about that. I bought this saw brand new. It has 10 to 15 hours on it. It's been stone dead reliable. It did have some weird runnability issues when it was breaking, and not runnability issues, but it was... Um, it kind of ran funny for the first couple tanks, but as I broke it in, it, it's, uh, it's a Swiss watch. Okay, let's talk about the rest of these saws. I'm going to start with this one. 576 XPG. This is a, what year is this? This is a 2012. So this thing's, wow, this thing's 12 years old already. I've had this saw for five or six years. I don't use it a ton um, for no reason other than it's a little bit heavy. And uh, I don't know, I like a 372 better. Would I tell you not to buy one of these? Nope. Does this make more power than a 372? Oh yeah, uh, you can, it's, it's instant. Is it faster? Yep. Everything about this saw is better than a, than a 372. 
Um, in fact, friends, I think this has more power than that. I really do. Um, maybe we should do a cutoff someday. But now let's talk about this saw. This saw was rebuilt by my buddy. He bought like 10 of these um, from, I think it was a local tree service. It might have been the local a local government saw. They pitched 10 of these. They're no good. They're garbage. They blow up. We don't want them anymore. My buddy bought all of them. And uh, he went through and rebuilt all of them. This one he did for himself. This one's all OEM. Um, this saw had a blown up set of crank bearings and a scored top end. Okay. When we first were looking at these saws, we were we made our mind up. These are no good. They have plastic bearings. I remember looking them over with him. And he's like, look at these things. And then he threw a couple together and we started running them. It's like, wow, this thing's smooth. Wow, this thing makes power. Um, wow, this thing runs hot. And we noticed these things. So what did I do to this one? Well, I did a muffler mod. There goes the heat issue. And now it's just, wow, this thing makes power and it's super smooth. And it starts and idles. It's it, it's a great saw. It's been, it's been rebuilt for probably 10 years. I haven't put a wrench on it. I've literally never touched this saw. I run it a couple times a year. It doesn't have a lot of time on it, but it's been... It's been completely and 100% reliable. I'm going to skip this one first because this is my 562. You guys know the deal on that. Now, what do I have here? I have two 550s. Not sure what year they are. These are 10, 12 years old probably. Um, they've been in the saw shop. They're covered in dust. This one probably has 15 hours on it. Okay, 15 hours. Look at it. It's like brand new. Like, look at this thing. It's minty. Got a few scuffs on the side. Um, one thing I don't like about these is this. these discolor a lot with heat. Okay? I've never discolored one of these side covers, but I always seem to get them discolored. Um, weird, eh? We're going to talk about that. Okay, that one and this one. Look at this one. I think this saw might have a hundred hours on it. Look at, that thing's gotten hot. Hot enough to bake the paint on the side. Let's grab our scrunch. Now, I'm just gonna do them both. I want you guys to see. Now, I bought this saw I don't know, four years ago maybe. It's, I've never done anything with it. I don't even know if I'm gonna do anything with these. I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, look at this thing. Interesting, eh? So it wasn't lean on the intake side. Looks pretty good there. Look at the exhaust side. Notice, no scoring on this side, the flywheel side, scoring on this side. Okay. Bottom end's fine. Okay, bottom end still turns over. But again, pretty scored up. And you look at the bottom end, it's kind of crispy looking down there. And the side cover, I wonder what this clutch looks like. Wow, the clutch is actually blue on this saw. Look at that. Interesting, eh? Okay, let's look at the other one. Some of you are already getting what I'm where I'm going with this. Now, I'm not making apologies for these saws when they came out, they had some issues. These had some issues. Um they got upgraded and, and fixed and they've been good. Um look at this one. Now, I bought this off a fella, original owner. He used it a couple times to cut firewood. If you look, wow, eh? This thing scored, like, all the way around. What about this side? Again, no scoring on the intake side. But she got crispy on the exhaust side. Okay? Like the ring stuck. Now, I remember buying this. Um, met the fella in a parking lot, and... He told me the whole story about what happened to this saw. 
which was, you know, I kind of like. It's it's nice to be able to get the story. Now, there's no clutch on this thing. But again, the clutch was crispy on this saw, I remember. And uh, got hot, but not as hot as this one. Okay. Now, this saw here, friends, this saw got a bad rap in the last video. People were, were jumping in. They're like, oh, those things are no good. You know, I saw on the internet that people people have had problems with them. 100%, friends. People have had problems with these. Um, the first gens, they, they had their issues. They had carb issues. Um, Husqvarna updated the carb, I think, three times. But as time went on, I've, I've heard about bearing issues with these. Um, this saw had a bad bottom end, bad bearings when I got it. Um, and again, it was thoroughly blown up. Now, friends, when I got this saw, it still ran, and it had no crank seal on one side. The crank seal was missing because there was so much play. Okay? Um, and same thing with this saw. This saw, when this saw came to my body, the crank bearings were blown up in it. And the top end was scored. And again... Heat issues. See how hot that's gotten? And you can see it in these crankcases. Look what color they, they turn. Okay? They get dark. I don't know if you can see that here. Kind of interesting, isn't it? I wonder if it says the year on here. I can't remember. Anyways. You guys get the idea. Okay, so... If you took this as a sample of five series saws and I mean, friends, I could do a video and I mean, it's all in how you, how you look at the data. I mean, only two of these saws are running and the other three are blown up. So that must mean that five series saws are no good, right? Maybe not. Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to be real with you guys out there with these saws. This one was blown up, this one was blown up, this one was blown up, and that one was blown up. Now, I never got the bar and chain with this one. I did with this one, this one, and this one. I'm going to dig through my junk and see if I can find the bars and chains. Okay, so when I picked this saw up, it it uh, it came from an auction. And the fellow said, this is the bar that was on it. And he goes, somebody got that thing hot. Okay, this bar's chipped. It's got a huge burr on the edge. It's gotten hot. You could you see how it's kind of all blue. Okay. That's the bar that was on this saw. Now I've been digging. I can't find the bars for these. I have both of them. Both are horribly blued and discolored. So friends, all four of these saws have been blown up. Now I'm going to say this. You got to be sharp with these saws. I see it all the time. I used to be bad for it. If you're going to run... Saws like this, they have to be sharp. If you're not sharp, you're going to create heat. Okay? You're going to create lots of heat, and you're going to end up with a clutch like this. I've been over this so many times on the channel, but I felt like we need to touch on it. Okay? Look how hot that's gotten. Okay? Like, that's incredible how hot this has gotten. Now, when this gets hot... And, and I hear guys cooking oilers with their saws like this. Well, here, I'll show you with five series saws. So this gets hot, okay? That gets hot, and then look at that. It's blue. That gets hot. And then look, look, this saw needs an oiler. This oiler got hot, okay? So, <sighs> look, there's pieces of the oiler gear around the back. Never, I've never taken this saw apart. Okay, friends, see that? That's the oiler gear melting to the clutch hub. Okay, and what ends up happening, you melt these off. That's why a lot of guys have oiler problems with these. They have oiler problems because they're not sharp. Now, I don't want you to take this as a shot. I want everybody to enjoy running their power saw. It took me years to perfect my sharpening. To now that now the point comes where I can I can sharpen a saw and it just cuts. This saw here, friends, I remember the guy, it was a, a not so proud dad moment. He pulled up in the parking lot, he had the saw, it was basically brand new. 
it looked brand new other than that. And he said, yeah, my, my kid said he was going to go cut some firewood for me. And I gave him this saw and he ran it into the dirt and it got dull and he just kept running it. And well, pop goes the weasel. I wonder how this oiler looks. Now, this is a common problem with all saws. There's no oiler on here, friends, so I can't even have a look. I'm sure if I dug a little deeper in my parts bins, I'd find the oiler for this is cooked. Um, and if I remember correctly, the clutch for this saw was missing because it got so hot. Uh, it just got tossed. Okay, so... Doll chain, doll chain. This saw, doll chain. When I got this thing, the chain was so bad on it, you could have run her across your leg. All the damage to this saw that you see, the discoloration in the case, the oiler gear that got cooked years ago that I had to replace, the broken AV mount that I had to replace, everything that I've done to this saw is because somebody had a doll chain. And what happens when you have a doll chain? You reef on the saw and you flex and you push and you end up breaking AV mounts. See these limiter straps? They will let it move so far and then it, they break, okay? Broken AV mounts are often a sign of doll chains. This saw here, absolutely smoked. Why? A doll chain. Okay, friends, I want you to think about this. I've showed this many times. Pretend this is the other side of the saw. Okay. Actually, this is the right side. Your clutch mounts to here. Okay. Your clutch gets hot. You transfer that heat to the crankshaft. That crankshaft gets smoking hot, hundreds and hundreds of degrees. It gets transfers out to the crank seal, transfers out to the crank bearing, transfers out to the lobes on the crankshaft. Now, what's better for horsepower? Cold air, right? We put cold air kits on our cars and diesels, and well, it's the same thing with a chainsaw. If your incoming charge of air gets hot, guess what? It holds less fuel and less oil. And what happens? The saw leans out. If you get your saw too hot, it's going to lean out. And if your saw leans out, this saw here, friends, was blown up because of a dull chain. <laughs> the saw that I made into the famous cutaway. If your air in your saw leans out, you blow your saw up. It's just that simple. Why? A dull chain. 99% of saw failures I see are from a dull chain. Now, I'm not calling anybody out, friends. I'm just saying. Um, if you're throwing dust, I, I also don't have air filter issues on this saw. I've never had dust in the air horn, but I run this thing really sharp. Why? Because I'm scared to blow it up. I'm scared to blow it up because of what it is. It's a 5 Series. There's not a lot of fuel and air that's going to fit in there because of the crank stuffers. Um, they're meant to run super fuel efficient, which means less fuel and air going through the saw and oil, right? And they run hot, just like modern... The, the engine in your pickup truck, if it's new, runs hot. Way hotter than an older truck would. Well, part of that is, is they're trying to get the efficiency out of these things. Now, I mentioned ported saws, friends, at the beginning of this video. One thing is, um, everybody wants a ported saw. I, I get guys all the time saying, hey, Tin Man, you know, would you port me a saw? And a lot of people, I talk them out of it, and they're like, what do you mean? You're a saw porter. Friends, if you can't, uh, ported saws, they run hot. If you run a ported saw doll, you will blow it up fast. Trust me. <laughs> um, it's all in the chain. As Buckin would say, it's all in the filing. He's true. Once I learned that, I was like, you're right. It is all in the filing. Um, so what I'm getting at here, friends. Uh, another thing, before I close this video off. Um... I've heard of folks, so they they have a 562, it runs good. They run it dull. And they're leaning on it in a big cut, and they do a 50-second, minute-long cut with a 20-inch bar and a dull chain. Okay? And they lean on it, and it's throwing dust. Friends, if you're throwing dust and you're not cutting punky wood, you're dull. If you have to lean on your saw, you're dull. That's that's just, you know, that's that's just the way it is. And you know what? I used to be dull at times. 
and I didn't know what was going on. I was dull, friends. I was. I was very dull. Um, or my rakers were too high, or a combination of being dull and rakers too high. But what I'm saying, friends, is so these things here, if you if you rag on these saws, and I've noticed this, if you rag on this saw with a dull chain, and then you, you go and do some limbing with it after, and you notice it's blubbering like it's running rich, it is, friends. These things have quite a bit of ability to dump more fuel in because they're auto-tuned. This saw ran with no crank seal in it when I got it. Okay, the crank seal was completely blown out. I had it idling. Now, I couldn't give it throttle, but I was amazed at how much fuel these things will actually dump into the motor. And now there are limitations, but... I'm just saying, friends, if you get this thing hot, guess what? It'll dump fuel in trying to cool itself down, it seems. And it'll sound like it's missing or you have a carburetor issue. Um, you don't. You have a saw that's trying to keep itself alive. And uh, these things do not tolerate being dull. I could blow this 572 up fast or say it doesn't run good if I let it get too hot. The main reason for that, friends, is to keep the heat out of these things. These things run hot, real hot. It's just the nature of the beast. Now, would I prefer that they made old school 372 still? For sure. But that's not the world we live in. And uh, with the modern emissions comes issues and heat. The enemy of an air-cooled engine, you see, it just has these fins, is heat. Okay. And the number one way to get a saw hot is to run a dull chain. So I think, now I'm not saying everything, every problem that these have had is chain related. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not as familiar with these. I know these are known to run hot and pop. But again, um, who runs 50cc saws generally? Well, the average firewood cutters. And the average fellow usually is not usually the guy that has the sharpest chain. That's been my experience cutting with other folks. Um, most people that I know that aren't serious about saws, they they run a chain till it's dull and they put a new chain on. They don't even sharpen. So, and that, that's super common. Um, and I think these are hot. These are very nasty little 50cc saws. In fact, they'd probably cut along with a ported saw, a modern, you know, or an old 50cc ported saw. Which means they make heat, you know, more horsepower means more heat. More heat means a leaner saw. A leaner saw means if you have a dull chain, it's going to blow up. Um, these did have carburetor issues. Um, I think they had some bearing failure issues. These have had their fair share of teething issues. I'm not apologizing for Husqvarna. I'll call a spade a spade. But what I'm saying, friends, is this came to me as a grenaded saw that nobody wanted. Everybody said... I don't want that. The guy that bought it was like, I don't want it. It's garbage. I put it together and said, I don't want these. They're garbage. I'm going to run this for a little bit and I'll sell it dirt cheap to somebody. Well, five, six years later, here we are. And the only reason why it's apart is not because it blew up because it was getting tired and I have the parts to fix it. So, but here's the thing, friends. Once I read the hot start procedure in the owner's manual, I never had hot start issues anymore. I see guys trying to restart these the old school way and they don't start. And by the time they realize they've done something wrong, it's flooded and then it doesn't start at all. Um, you got to read the owner's manual. Use the purge valve, pump it, you know, five, six times, put it on fast idle and pull it over and it'll fire right up. Um, that's been my experience. Once I learned to do that, I've never had hot start issues. And it does get sweltering hot here. Um, we can get into, in Fahrenheit, like 120s with super high humidity. And uh, it, you can have saws that won't restart here. It's very common. And they've had carburetor issues. Um, I think mine's an EL48. I think the original saws had like an EL44. And uh, then they went to a 46, and then they went to a 48. I don't even know what the new saws have, but... Uh, I think the thing is, friends, because I'm a saw porter and I'm a saw builder, I never run a dull chain, ever. I always bring four saws, three saws with me when I go cutting. When a saw gets dull, I throw it in the truck, I grab another one, I fire it up, and away I go. So that's my take on auto-tune saws. 
you got to be sharp with them. If you're not sharp, you're going to blow yourself off. That's been my experience with these. This isn't calling out anybody or, you know, I'm just, I'm calling it like I see it, friends. I want to help you guys. And I just, I want you guys to, I want you guys to be aware of how these things work. Because once you learn how to sharpen a chain, the wonder of running a sharp power saw Especially a nasty 562 or a 550 or a 572. Once you get your chain dialed in, um, these things are incredible. Like, man, do these things cut stock. One thing I will recommend with these, though, is a muffler mod. That one's got a pipe, that one's modded, and this one's modded. These two are stock. I ran this stock for probably a year, and then I muffler modded it. Um... Because I felt like it does run a little hot. And it does. This runs hotter than any older saw I have. That's just the nature of them. But it also will outcut any 60cc saw I've ever run. Especially the old ones. The old saws are great. Like your 630 supers and that. But this thing will cut circles around them. Um, this thing will almost roll with my 044. True story. Um, 044 is an easier saw to run. And you know. It's not apples to apples comparison, but I mean, this thing's almost an old 70cc saw in power, if you're sharp. And the other thing is, friends, don't lean on your saw. I see it all the time. If you're dull, you lean. The more you lean, you're putting so much pressure on that clutch and that outboard bearing. They're not meant to do that. You should lay your saw down on the wood, pull the trigger, and it should pull itself through the wood. Maybe the slightest little bit of pressure. If you're not, if you're finding your chains won't do that, you're dull, and or your rakers are too high. That's been my experience, and once I really took a hard look at my own filing and said, hey, you got to get better at this, I really spent a lot of time filing, and now I don't have any issues. Here's one of my hand-filed chains. This chain has some time on it, cutting hardwood. Yes, that is a diaper in the back of the truck because when you change your kid's diaper in the passenger seat, you got a winger somewhere. Okay, that's a hand file. Notice my rakers aren't super low. I was cutting hardwood with a saw and it cuts. Okay, friends, that's enough about that. Post a comment below. Uh, try to take it easy on me. I make these videos trying to help you guys uh, i don't do the my saw is faster than your saw thing i don't put down other builders i just call it like i see it and uh if you're having problems with your autotune not hot starting it's probably because you're not hot starting it right now i'm not saying that's always the case but and if you can't keep these things running it's probably because you're dull it's just the way it is anyhow Okay, friends, well, take it easy on the Tin Man. I'm just trying to help you guys out. But every time I get... I've had 441s in here that are blown up because they're dull. I've had 461s in here that are blown up because they're dull. I've had auto-tune saws that are blown up because they're dull. Um, dull chains is the number one killer of power saws. Not bad fuel or improper oil mixture or you're not running a premium oil. The number one cause of blown up power saws is dull chains. A chain has to be sharp. If it's not sharp, it gets hot. And if it gets hot, you blow your saw off. It's just that simple, friends. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. And I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, this isn't a shot at anybody. It's just what I've seen over the last... I mean, I've been puttering on power saws in this shop for... 10 years probably friends time flies and uh every time i get a blown up saw that needs a full rebuild almost every time it's the guy's like yeah i was dull and it blew up it's just what it is thanks for watching take her easy see you guys in a couple days later